G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Sunday morning here in Australia and the markets are just all over the place. You know, some things are going up and some things are going down, which is pretty stock standard, but it really is just kind of topsy-turvy. You know, Ethereum was over the $2,000 mark. It's pulled back down under that, so now 1900 So down over the 24 hours, but it's, you know, up in the last hour. And Bitcoin, you know, exactly the same, but obviously Bitcoin's outperformed Ethereum. I mean, we can see the market cap is 1.7 trillion. So this was only minutes ago, 1.723 trillion. So I've made up sort of, oh God, what, $7 billion uh, in a very short amount of time. BTC dominance continuing to rise up about 60%. ETH dominance is actually dropping and gas prices are ridiculously high you know what's kind of new obviously ethereum has some issues and that's why binance chain has done so well and you know other platforms like Polkadot and cardano and ethereum just can't seem to crack that 2000 i think it is all to do with the gas fees personally i think people you know the average investor at least is going this is too much and they're exiting out of their ethereum positions hence why the price is just kind of stuck institutions are still keen to kind of buy it i would say but regular retail investors they're just like no i can't afford to use it and they do bring a lot of money to the space all right let's have a look though things have been pumping absolutely and others have been you know not doing so well so what's really moved all right zk swap never heard of it i'm guessing it's came from outside of the top 100 Ravencoin has been on an absolute tear. So anyone who is in that doing well. Uniswap, there you go. People are still piling into Uniswap. Sushi Swap, much the same. Sushi X, Cardano, Polkadot. So there's definitely some really good gains there. But there's some been some really good losses as well. So Venus, Pancake Swap. So of course they were going to have pullbacks. Binance Chain, same thing. Of course it's had a pullback. Ren Token had a pullback was doing quite well but again you just got to go next door and have a look all right this basically pumped you know 100 something percent and then we've had a bit of a pullback look just in the last hour though it's already starting to make gains back again so it's really hard to pick what's going to happen in these markets now the new pool on the uh, glass note i don't ha have it but i've seen some other people showing who have shown it it's getting quite high and so that is a little bit concerning because usually when the new pool gets high and starts to get into that over i think it's 7.5 which is euphoric territory there's usually a hefty retracement that happens either just before it which is what happened not that long ago or it gets into that euphoric stage and that can last for a little while now there is a saying that markets can stay crazy longer than you can stay solvent so <laughs> that's what we need to be careful no one really knows what's going to happen are we going to have a big correction before we get into that euphoric stage or do we get into that euphoric stage and it just keeps going you know people talk about the you know the super cycle that we could be in and who knows no one really knows but there's arguments for why we're probably due for a hefty correction but then there's also arguments for why maybe we're just going to push right through and this really will be that super cycle that people have spoken about all right here's why um where's the one i was looking for all right here's why people think we might be having a correction so tesla billionaire elon musk whose tweets about the meme based cryptocurrency dogecoin help pushed it to a 10 billion dollar valuation has warned the price of bitcoin and ethereum seem high he said the same thing about tesla stocks and then they took a big crash and i wonder if maybe he bought his own stocks back i'm not saying that that's what elon would do but maybe he has decided that he wants more ethereum and bitcoin but he think it's a little bit overpriced now i don't know if he would do that on purpose i think elon's genuinely a pretty good guy but look and you know and again that could be considered market manipulation there was already talk about the sec may come after him for you know putting out tweets but again i suppose if he said that and then all of a sudden he's found to be buying it on the dip you know that could be something else that may be looked at and i'm not saying he is or really i'm not saying he is doing that i'm not saying he isn't either i don't really know what's going on but this is something that may create a bit of a correction 
So the Bitcoin price has surged by almost 500% over the last 12 months, partly due to Musk's pro-Bitcoin and cryptocurrency tweets and his electric car company Tesla adding Bitcoin to its balance sheet following in the footsteps of US uh, software company MicroStrategy. So this could be a bit of a case for sort of bearishness. Now, we can go over here. Bullishness. So Grayscale are on a hiring spree. The growth of the leading cryptocurrency asset manager, Grayscale Investments, has pushed the company into appointing three new C-suite hires. Uh, as a result, the company has filled the roles for Chief Operating Officer, Chief Compliance Officer, and Chief People Officer. So obviously Grayscale are still super bullish. They're hiring a lot of people, and they continue to buy up cryptocurrency as well, as do PayPal. PayPal are getting ready to offer cryptocurrencies you know, to the UK. They've only just been selling it to their American audience or you know, patrons, customers, whatever you want to call it. They're now moving into the UK and parts of Europe, and then eventually they'll go worldwide. So the scary thing is, yes, we might be high on the new bull meter and things like that, and we could possibly be due for a correction. This hasn't even gone global yet. And we can even talk about the, the institutions, you know, the institutional money coming in. Have they really piled in yet? Do we think they are really here en masse? Well, only 5% of financial executives plan to hold Bitcoin by the end of 2021. And that's not saying they plan on coming in, buying it, and then getting out. They just haven't even got in yet. Although several well-known companies recently allocated funds to BTC, a study among 77 financial executives showed that the overall number of firms planning to get on the Bitcoin Bitcoin bandwagon is relatively modest at just 5%. Somewhat expectedly, most skeptics, skeptics justified their decision with BT's volatility. So really, we don't have that many institutional buyers here. Don't get me wrong, the ones that are here have you know done a great job, but we are yet to see the true institutional FOMO, and it will come, they will have no choice. They're just, they're still on the sides. They still don't believe, you know, they think the price is just going to dump massively, you know, if they get in. And look, in all fairness, the more that they get in, the less likely that that's uh, likely to happen. Unfortunately, they're probably going to have to pay an absolute premium. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Could there be a correction? Absolutely. I just I don't know if we're ready for it yet. Even though the Noople thing is getting high and the altcoins are going wild, I can't see any major sell-offs of Bitcoin. I can see some Bitcoin being sold off, don't get me wrong, but I don't think enough is going to be sold off. And if for some reason there was some kind of big sell-off, you know, let's say a 20-30% correction in Bitcoin, I think that's when all the institutional players, these people sitting on the sidelines would absolutely dive in. And I don't think it'd get down to 30%. I mean, I know if Bitcoin dropped down 30% from here, I'd be buying it up. Just a 20% dip, I would be buying it up. So I'm not sure that we're going to see those kinds of corrections. Again, I could be wrong and it's never financial advice that I provide you. I'm not a financial advisor and no one really knows what's going on in the market but I just think it's going to level off for a little while before we just go on another big leg higher. Now, another reason for that is we can look here. Now, this, I suppose, can be a bullish sign and a bearish sign. So, REN price rallies 60% after hitting a new all-time high. All right, so attention for protocol. The attention for the protocol received a noticeable uptick at the end of January when it was announced that Dogecoin would be integrated with REN, enabling the trading of REN Doge in the growing DeFi ecosystem. Now, Doge has had quite a significant pullback. And again, some people might say this is bearish. We can go down here. Since that time, the REN ecosystem has continued to expand uh, as more top-tier projects like Filecoin have undergone the transformation to become Renfill, which is now being considered for addition to the Aave ecosystem. So that's bullish. There's, you know, depending on how you look at it, it could be all bullish 
or you know some people might say dogecoin is kind of bearish because they think it's a meme coin which it is and they think it has no real world value but look there's a generation that are growing up and probably have different thoughts about it and they may actually that self-fulfilling prophecy thing they may believe in dogecoin and it may just simply become something real and then we have ren you know uh, hooking up not hooking up but you know filecoin uh, now being renfill which can be added to the rv ecosystem which i think is bullish news so again you've got to try and work out what you think now ravencoin has gone up 865 percent that is absolutely unbelievable i mean look at that bam just a massive spike now that's usually something that happens you know at the end when things are getting euphoric so again we could see that as a little bit of bearish news that maybe yep things are too exuberant and there's going to be a heavy pullback absolutely possible now what we can do is go over though and have a look ren pullback Binance, pullback, Pancake, pullback, Venus, pullback. But look, just in the last hour, they're already starting to get bought back up. So no one really knows, are we really ready for a dip yet? For there to be a major dip, as we can see here, Bitcoin and Ethereum and everything, they're already starting to be bought back up. For a major dip to happen, Bitcoin needs to be sold off. All right. North America's first Bitcoin ETF, I spoke about this the other day, it raised $80 million in an hour. Well, now it's raised $421 million within two days. Do you get the feeling like the market is ready for a pullback or do you think it is just getting started? Remember that, that saying, and I said it a little bit differently, differently before, but a market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. So... Do you think we're ready for a big heavy correction? I'm just not sure. Is it possible? Absolutely. All right. Bearish sort of case. So this is Bill Gates. Microsoft founder Bill Gates is no longer a Bitcoin bear. We spoke about this the other day. However, uh, as, however as an innovation, he says that cryptocurrency is one that the world would be better off without because it allows for certain criminal activities. Now that is just straight up FUD. Well, yes it is FUD. Is there criminal activities that can and are done on cryptocurrencies? Absolutely. Nowhere near as much as what is done with the fiat system that we have. And a digital dollar will basically be like a cryptocurrency and that will really help to alleviate it. But it won't completely eliminate it. There's a saying, you know, you build a better mousetrap, they just build a better mouse. That's the way it is. That is the evolution of everything. Of course, there's going to be people who can use it for criminal activities. It doesn't matter what you come out with, there will be ways for criminal activity to happen. And quite often, the criminal activity is held, you know, by the people that are supposed to, you know, we're supposed to trust banks, governments and things like that. So there, there's some massive fud in there. And again, that could be a reason for now, a bearish sort of trend, at least in the short term. Long term, I'm still uh, positive. And even in the sort of mid uh, term, I'm still bullish on cryptocurrencies. But it doesn't mean we can't have that correction. Another interview published this Thursday where Gates talked about cryptocurrencies was with the Wall Street Journal, responding to the question, what's the one tech innovation the world would be better off without? Now, he, he said... The way cryptocurrency works today allows for certain criminal activities. Uh, it'd be good to get rid of that. The criminal activities or just the cryptocurrencies? I'm sure he meant the criminal activities because cryptocurrencies are also a better way of tracking money and keeping uh, you know, an eye on where the money's going and things like that. They just haven't worked out the part where we can identify exactly who owns those wallets because it's easy to start up a wallet and you can basically have a thousand different wallets and then it becomes hard to find out who the owner of the wallet is but it's not hard to track where that money went all right however gates quickly added i probably should have said bioweapons that's a really bad thing we shouldn't have technology for that so he's kind of half gone back on his word right there now so some more bullish stuff though all right ark invest kathy wood on bitcoin etf prospects prospects and tesla's billion dollar investment 
So Bitcoin's long-term outlet outlook is brightening, according to ARK Invest's Kathy Wood. I think the probability of an ETF has gone up. Absolutely. Australia's looking at getting one. Canada's got two. America is going to get one. It's just a matter of time. So again, how can you be bearish when all of this stuff is still coming? And we've only got 5% of institutions that have come in at the moment. They will come in. They will just have no choice in the end. The price will go up. Will it come back down a little bit? Yep. But in the long term, it is most likely just going to continue to rise. They will have no option but to buy in. And yes, they're worried about, you know, a $50,000 Bitcoin at the moment because they think it's going to have this mass retracement and go all the way back to, you know, $5,000. That's highly unlikely, highly, highly unlikely, but not impossible. So just something we need to consider. But if it continues to go up, then they will have no choice but to buy it at higher prices. They just don't understand it yet. And they think, oh, oh, we obviously have to, you know, put a lot into Bitcoin. And then that means we can lose a lot. No, just put a little bit in. You don't have to put everything in. But if, you know, say you did put a lot in, you've got to think about it in the long term. Where's it going to be in 5, 6, 10, 20 years time? Not where it might it be uh, in 2 years time where, yeah, we probably could be in the next bear market and it could have lost. But hey, you might get in now at 50,000 and it goes to 300,000 before it has its next really big bear market and then retraces back to maybe around about where it is now. No one really knows. That's, you know, investing. All right, so it says here, again, yep, the probability of it going up. I think we have individuals now involved who really understand the space and I think the likelihood has gone up for a US base Bitcoin ETF. Completely agree. If all corporations in the United States were to put 10% of their cash into Bitcoin, that alone would add $200,000 to the Bitcoin price. Wood said, now, we obviously do not believe that this is going to happen very quickly. I completely agree. It's not going to happen very quickly, but it is going to happen. And by the time that 10% does happen, it'll be over 200000 because more and more people will have bought it by then. This is, you know, the big corporations holding off and they're, and they're going to wait. And then eventually they're going to start to put in more than 10% as well. Now, again, this could take quite some time though. This has to mature a little bit before broad-based adoption can take place. But we're very reassured that companies like Square and Tesla have chosen to allocate. So Square, PayPal, Microsoft, uh, sorry, uh, MicroStrategy, uh, Grayscale. So there's plenty of companies out there that are doing it. And again, um, MicroStrategy, they ended up raising $1.05 billion and they are going to buy more Bitcoin. They can just see what's coming and they are going to make sure that they build themselves, you know, a place in the Bitcoin ecosystem that just can't be rivaled. You know, maybe Grayscale might be able to get close. We'll have to wait and see. All right, last but not least. So Sushi.com now belongs to a decentralized finance project. 2021 may be a bright year for SushiSwap thanks to a new domain name and an ambitious roadmap. So crypto venture firm Future Fund yesterday announced that it had bought the Sushi.com domain name for decentralized finance project SushiSwap. The VC firm said that it acquired the domain to greatly increase internet traffic and exposure to the Sushi brand for their forthcoming new projects. So it seems like things are going pretty well in the crypto space in general, but yet you know there's hesitation and people are worried, and particularly with the new bull. Look, the new bull won't stay the same forever. It just can't. It's going to have to change as the market changes. And it just feels like the market is changing at the moment. You know, again, we have some institutional option, op, institutional adoption occurring, but it seems like it's only 5% at the moment. So we still haven't had that real kind of institutional FOMO yet. So that means that a lot of this is still kind of retail based. And I'm guessing that some of these institutions are going to wait around for this next big correction whenever that may be because retail are pretty flaky when it comes to these investments. You know, if someone buys Bitcoin now at 50,000 and for the next maybe, 
you know, four or five months, it doesn't really do too much. Maybe it gets up to sort of 60, 62,000. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying this is the mindset of the average investor. They go, right, yeah, I've bought it at 56,000. Six months' time, it's only made $6,000. And there's other things that have, you know, made more money. They'll just go, all right, I'm getting out of it. And they'll sell their Bitcoin. And if everyone starts to sort of doing that, and particularly people who've got in later and go, oh my God, I bought it at, uh, you know, 61,000. Uh, it went to 62 and now it's down to 57. They're just going to panic sell. And that will start off a cascading effect. Whether there's going to be enough of that effect going on to ever really bring Bitcoin's price down a whole lot, I'm not sure because I'm quite confident that, you know, some of the 95% of institutions that haven't got into Bitcoin yet are just kind of waiting and looking for the dip. And if they see a somewhat significant enough dip, and it may only be, you know, 15, 20, 30% dips, that is all it's going to take them to go, yep, and they're going to snap it up. And they may already be in contact with places like Coinbase, which seem to be doing it a lot for them. And they may have said to Coinbase, look, we want to get into Bitcoin, but we're just not happy at these prices. If there's any 30%, you know, 40% retracements, you know, buy some for us. That's most likely, maybe not most likely, but that is quite possible that that's what a number of, you know, big institutions have done. They are still simply waiting on the sides and they think 50,000 is too high. And so until there's a 30% correction and it'll be from any price, they're not going to say from 50,000 because if it continues to go up, they could just simply miss it. They've likely just said any, you know, 15, 20, 30% dips that occur, we want you to buy in there and we'll just constantly keep waiting for 15, 30% dips. And that wouldn't be a bad way for people who are simply just too scared to get in to get in. But the problem is the prices could continue to go quite higher. Whereas if maybe they just kind of, you know, bought it all up now, not in one big hit and spike the market, but, you know, like MicroStrategy has done it, buy it at 50, you know, 6,000 what it's worth now and just say, rightio, you know, the worst that can happen is maybe it halves from here. And yeah, we've lost some money, but they've only put in a couple of percentage of their total uh, allocation, but then they just make these massive gains and then the 30% retracements and that never get back down to 56,000. We just don't know. That's the things that we're all kind of, you know, waiting to see what's going to happen. All right, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think the sort of 95% of institutions that haven't got into Bitcoin yet are simply waiting on the sidelines for a big retracement or do you think they're simply not going to get in? I know, uh, you know, there's definitely some that are saying they're not going to get in, but eventually they will be forced to. I think a majority of them are waiting on the sidelines for a big dip because they see a big dip coming. But that is what makes me also believe that we won't see a 50% correction anytime soon because there'll be institutions, excuse me, waiting on the sides and they will just buy that up. They have likely, again, gone to Coinbase and said, if this retraces, say, 25%, we're in, buy us some. If it retraces, you know, 30%, again, anything over 25%, uh, that's when they're going to be in. And they would likely have not said, you know, that it's 50, you know, 25% from 50,000. It's just 25% from whatever price. That's my personal opinion. I'd love to know yours down below. All right, well, it's Sunday. I've got to get uh, on with, you know, doing the things that normally get done on a Sunday, cleaning houses and all the rest of it. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all still on that gain train and I'll see you next time.